Hello guys, I hope you are fine and having a great time. Um, in the past, I published this article with all the other co-authors in 2016 uh, in the journal Engineering Failure Analysis. The work was quite interesting and um, has been cited a lot of times. Um, what I want to do today is I want to um, develop or just show you the numerical simulation model that we developed behind this. So to make that possible, um, what I did was I um, developed a lot of simulation models before uh, for you guys to see that how thermomechanical simulations in Abacus are modeled, how the post-processing of a contour integrated crack is done, and then how to define um, multiple materials or apply cyclic load on defined crack face interface. Um, and then uh, post-processing and high quality image extraction from Abacus Viewer. Um, I also um, made a video about um, how to define crack face interface. Um, I will link all these videos below uh, the video uh, please go and check them out um, today i want to talk about um, the numerical simulation model behind it and therefore we come back to abacus um, so basically in um, uh, this model what we are trying to do is we are developing a decoupled thermomechanical analysis earlier i made um, simulation models showing you how coupled thermomechanical simulation model works here uh, more or less it is the same but i am running thermal model separately than um, mechanical model and basically um, just ignore all, all these files we will just look into look into the th th heat heat transfer file and mechanical file which i have a model just one case each and then i will show you in the article um, this document how um, the rest of the simulation are developed and how we get the results and you will also see a lot of things uh, how the results are being extracted from Abacus and use them in a, a research paper and things like this so um, uh, to explain the overall model let's look at this um, case basically we have um, a cylinder uh, a thick cylinder and inside this thick cylinder we have a water channel so water is flowing inside it and outside it we have a flange which is being heated by and the tip of the flange so the outer rim of the flange is being heated up by induction coil and then it is being heated and cooled down and the water is continuously flowing inside the thick cylinder to keep it cool from the root and we want to analyze the thermomechanical fatigue crack initiation and propagation on the uh, flange outer rim so when are the cracks initiating how are they propagating what are the effects and things like this um, this is the experimental setup uh, you can read about uh, about it in detail in this article and also in the references which are given here uh, also here um, there is explanation about how the cracks initiate and what are, what is the pattern that is observed and how they propagate and things like this and this kind of phenomena is very basic for uh, thermomechanical um, and or uh, thermomechanical um, um, high intensity machinery for example nuclear reactors for example um, gas turbines or things like this so this is a basic exemplary case to study it uh, to define it in simulation what i am doing is basically i'm developing a 2d model so this is the thick cylinder inside which you can see i have uh, given it a thickness a certain thickness and then this is the outer flange rim which has been defined the dimensions are already given in the article you can see here in this diagram and what i am doing is i am basically just defining a heat uh, heat transfer model so it is just thermal model here 
you can see that I define a flange separately the outer flange and the shaft which is inside separately I have just named them like this then I have defined x38 crmov 5 which is I think h13 tool steel or I don't know h11 tool steel uh, which is defined here and I have defined all the um, properties uh, assigned all the properties for example conductivity density uh, temperature dependent elasticity temperature dependent thermal expansion coefficient and temperature dependent um, uh, plastic behavior of the material um, have been defined and also temperature dependent specific heat of the material has been defined then the material has been assigned to both the shaft we will call it the shaft and uh, this area the flange the shaft and the flange um, appropriate sections were developed so by assigning thickness to the shaft and thickness a certain thickness to the flange both sections were defined and modeled and then we have developed an assembly so which can be seen here uh, then i have defined a heat transfer a heat transfer step which is basically 85.2 seconds long and i have defined it as transient 85.2 seconds is basically the time interval in which 10 thermomechanical cycles will complete so i want to run the simulation for 10 thermomechanical cycles and this is the time period for total thermomechanical cycles incrementation maximum allowable temperature change per increment is three and then the others is just the basic normal um, definition and in the field output I have selected thermal output as the output which would be written in the interaction properties uh, I have defined contact property which I will not be using in the thermal model but there is a surface film condition inside so I am not basically running a um, coupled thermomechanical fluid simulation so I am um, basically defining a surface film condition inside the shaft to mimic the conductivity of water so how much heat is being dissipated at this surface um, and um, it is basically being defined by defining the embedded coefficient uh, film coefficient of 7000 film coefficient amplitude instantaneous sink definition is it is uniform sink temperature is 25 and sink amplitude is instantaneous um, uh, then basically um, these the shaft and the flange are tied together by using a tie constraint um, um, and then I am basically what i am doing is i am only applying temperature on the flange so this is the magnitude of the temperature which i am applying with an with an amplitude of this um, we what we basically do how we define the temperature and the amplitude is basically the details are provided in the article here uh, we get the experimental temperature distribution along the radial path on the flange so the point one is on the, on the edge and point nine is at the root and we can see that how different thermocouples are experimentally recording the data the triangles and then the solid lines are the numerical simulation predictions at these points in depth and then basically we calibrate the heat transfer with uh, by applying different amplitudes and then uh, the uh, magnitudes of heat transfer and then calibrate this to make sure that the experimental uh, the numerical simulation heat transfer is similar to the experimental outcomes and we do it for several cycles to make sure everything is running fine the heat is not being accumulated on the uh, everything is defined in in the article um, the video will get quite longer if I'll start explaining it but yeah it, it, the article is really well written and everything is self-explanatory you can look at it here uh, so basically this is how we define the amplitude it is also given here w what is the amplitude which we gave as input is given in the this um, inset figure and uh, 
we um, again set the magnitude as such and predefined field is basically it should be selected for the whole body that the whole body is initially at 25 degrees centigrade when the simulation starts and when i run the simulation uh, I also one more thing which i want to show you is the mesh so you can see that the mesh in this simulation heat transfer simulation is quite coarse uh, but it is um, structured um, and we make it structured to make sure that there is no anomaly in the heat transfer um, and everything is smooth and everything is fine but it is rough to um, estimate the temperatures quickly uh, and effectively um, if I look at the uh, element type it is heat transfer standard linear and we can see that um, um, and then it is meshed by sectioning it from these points and then defining uh, the seeds on the edges such that I get a structured nice mesh. Um, if you are interested I can make a separate video on how to mesh these kinds of um, circular objects but for now it is not the area of interest but yeah you can just see how I have meshed it and then let's go to the results so the results of the simulation are what I am expecting is that basically it is a heat transfer simulation and will give me output on how heat is being transferred and now when I simulate it so nodal temperatures so you we can see that there are around 962 96 so so 96 let's make it bigger um, no options um, no legend yes no apply and this should be bigger and not scientific but engineering so yeah now you can see that the red is 96 and something like that if I run this so initially the temperature is 25 and then the rim is being heated up and you can see the temperature is rising the rim is heating up heating up heating up the internal surface is cooled continuously and at this point of the flange basically the shaft starts and you can see that there are a lot of heat is being dissipated due by the shaft and then there is a cooling cycle in which it is being cooled down and when it will be cooled down the next thermal cycle will come again and basically this will go on for 10 thermal thermomechanical cycles so this is the heat transfer model so the output is being recorded in the odb file for database file we will use that for further simulation i will show you how just take a quick uh, quick look at the nodal temperature distribution uh, hmm. on the outer rim and we can see that with time there is rise in temperature so heating then cooling heating and then cooling heating and then cooling heating and then cooling and in the research paper only one of this cycles is shown here um, yeah and also in the research paper there is a lot of discussion about um, the uh, the input of mechanical properties and um, the mesh and how were the boundary conditions and everything applied so I will highly recommend that you take a look at the research paper um, then uh, what we did was um, we ran only one thermal simulation and because we are running a decoupled thermomechanical simulation the advantage is that we can uh, develop multiple uh, mechanical models 
and we can use the input of only one thermal model which we ran so the temperature the temperature distribution and only one thermal model and we can give it as input in the predefined fields to all the mechanical output so all these simulations which i developed for the eight crack case only one thermal model was ran and yeah um used in all the simulation and this saves a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of uh, boundary conditions and hustle and errors and it takes care of a lot of a lot of a lot of things when we are doing this so i have i will just show you one exemplary case of um, when uh, primary crack is two millimeters long and secondary cracks are one millimeter long so these are total eight cracks which means there is one primary crack two millimeters long and there are seven secondary cracks which are one millimeter long um, and you will see so in these simulations basically um, this is my primary crack and the rest of them are my secondary cracks if you want to know the difference of primary crack and secondary crack uh, please go check out the video uh, please go check out the um, uh, research paper um, I will also give a link in the video description about it um, also there are many other cases ran but um, I will just now explain how we ran this um, so what uh, we are doing here is this is the case of 2 1 so again we have two parts if you look at here so we have a flange and a shaft which are uh, section uh, which are which have been assigned sections so the same material um, model and then um, there is an assembly of uh, two parts and then the, all the surfaces have been defined for the crack faces you can go and check out the video on how to define crack face interfaces to see how they are defined um, um, because in the in the article you will find this and also it is important to do it here you will find the details in that video now the step is static general um, the time period is same nonlinear geometry is on and incrementation is maximum is 0 0.1 um, in the field output request what I am doing is I am defining um, assigning the uh, field outputs which I want to request and in history output I am requesting all the um, cracks uh, the the energy release on the crack tips for 10 uh, contour integral so j integral for all the cracks I have to define this um, and then basically it can generate all the outputs uh, then I am defining the interaction between all the crack faces here you can see that it is for the crack 1 and then it is for crack 2 and crack 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 it is really important um, to define the crack face interfaces because during compression uh, because during um, thermal heating they expand and they overlap but actually this is never the case and um, therefore yeah um, just go and check out the video on uh, defining crack face interface and you will see how it's done why it's done what are the advantages what are the disadvantages things like this uh, then i am defining an amplitude for the temperature but basically this is not what i am using here the only boundary condition in the mechanical model is pin it inside so it does not move anywhere and then in the predefined field i am using the odb which we generated earlier by running th only the thermal model as an input and i am selecting from results or output database file begin step is one begin increment is one and step is one and increment is whatever the increment of that file is and the mesh compatibility because here i mesh the file differently than uh, the mesh in the heat transfer model so i have stated incompatible and exterior tolerance absolute and relative this is what um becker sets uh, um, by default i think and this is how we are now getting that thermal data and then the static panel step will use that thermal data and um, um, uh, run a thermomechanical simulation whereas the step is only static general so basically only mechanical 
uh, this is generally something um, we have developed this really complicated um, <laughs> really complicated uh, sectioning on the flange to introduce all the cracks where um, most of the mesh is structured so we don't have to deal with the uh, with the inconsistency of the results and this was tricky you can take a look at how we have done that so it is a circular surface and what we have done is we have sectioned the flange uh, to a point where um, all the cracks are going and then the crack is basically this line up to this point then there is an internal circle which is um, which is um, meshed in triangles and then there is this outer circle which is meshed in 10 outer contours and then this is this outer boundary which encapsules the random mesh and then there is this boundary which um, bridges this random mesh with the outer um, um, boundary and then the mesh is structured so if you look at the mesh you will see how things are going so this is structured this is structured the tip of the crack is structured but to encapsulate this unstructuredness here this extra envelope was developed and this extra envelope basically differentiates between the outer structured mesh and this inner unstructured mesh but overall the whole geometry is structured mesh so um, we can get more accurate results now when i look at the results of the simulation um, as you can see let's take a look at it again um, i will delete it uh, so let's take a look at it again field output i want to see unique nodal nodal temperatures uh, edit selection and let's see what is happening at this point so basically it should give me the same temperature distribution which it gave me in the thermal model um, and this is what we are expecting and then if um, and with this thermal heating and cooling continuous thermal heating and cooling i want to see the hoop stresses so i have to create a coordinate system which is cylindrical continue yes it is in the middle results options transformation user specified apply okay so i want to see radial tangential stresses <coughs> yes so this is the radial direction this is the transition direction and tangential which give us stresses in the hoop direction now i want to see how due to thermal heating and cooling the stresses are um, varying on the flange tip let's see let's see and we can see the results here that with heating um, there are compressive stresses and with cooling it goes in tension and with heating again there are compressive stresses and with cooling again in tension uh, and due to this uh, um, tension and compression on the crack faces if uh, we look at the numerical simulation closer so you can see at this crack which will open and close due to these compressive and tensile hoop stresses let's look at the simulation so initially it is being heated up so this is closing up and then there is a tensile cycle in which the crack opens up a little bit but it opens up and then there is a heating cycle again and then there is a cooling cycle in which crack can open up more and then there is heating cycle in which crack closes the phrase is close and then there is cooling cycle in which the crack opens up and then there is heating cycle again in which crack closes and then a cooling cycle in which crack opens up again this is what has been reported in the article if you look at the secondary cracks we see how they are propagating so during heating the crack faces close up and during cooling they open up and there is stress intensity there is energy release at the crack tip and we were looking at the effect of crack length and number of cracks on the flange on this also <coughs> we want to 
look at the for example j integral on the crack 1 contour 10 I want to see how J integral is behaving so we can see that um, energy release rate during first cycle is very low and the second cycle is high and the third cycle is high and the fourth cycle is and then it becomes more or less stable so um, these are the results which have been um, reported in the article if we take a look so basically then I am plotting how um, different number of cracks affect the hoop stresses and how um, with increasing number of cracks the compression of tensile hoop stresses change um, then there is a comparison with the experimental um, results also um, the in the video which i showed you how the tension and compression cycles affect on the cracks for surface how they are resulting and then the j integral and how it is translated into um, the crack length uh, of the primary crack crack length of the secondary crack and uh, the amount of energy release on the crack tip and how they can be plotted in 3d so this is basically um, the simulation i would highly recommend that you go and check out this um, very well written research paper and also i hope that you um, um, would um, like this um, analysis of decoupled thermomechanical setup and how this is helping us in analyzing quickly analyzing our, our desired results um, so yeah um, do um, comment below if you want to see something or something is missing and you want to know it in detail um, also um, yeah um, cite the paper if you find it useful in the publications which you will write further also uh, please go check out my google scholar page on which uh, i have written similar publications uh, with uh, similar to this in which we also did a very nice <coughs> simulation on the 3d wedge and it was um, quite interesting i have to find it here oh 3d wedge <laughs> but yeah go check out uh, please go check out my um, google scholar page as well and you will find a lot of uh, publications here um, which you will find useful so yeah thank you very much for your time i hope you learned a lot and see you next time. Thank you. Bye.